blessed today. So thankful to have another Sabbath to spend in his presence. Turn with me to Colossians chapter 1. I want to look here in verse 22. We know that we have been transferred, all of us who are in Jesus. We've been transferred from darkness to light. And we have been taken from slavery and to the kingdom of God. And here in verse 22, after Paul, he points that out. He says, Yet he has now reconciled you in his fleshly body through death. Jesus has reconciled us through death. In order to present you before him holy and blameless and beyond reproach. If indeed you continue in the faith firmly established and steadfast and not, move away, not moved away from the hope of the gospel that you have heard. It's a very dangerous thing to be moved away from the hope of the gospel. You know, the Bible says that hope is the anchor of our souls. If you don't have hope, you lose the will, you lose the strength to fight. You can't, you can't strive with Christ. You can't endure with him without hope. Hope is what anchors us. And our hope is, is not in what we are seeing. It's not in what we're experiencing. It's definitely not in what we're feeling at any given moment. Our hope, as we see here, is the gospel of something that we, we cannot... We have examples. We have testimonies. We have moves of God that we have experienced. But none of us have actually seen ourselves redeemed and completed in Christ. Even the Apostle Paul said that he didn't regard himself as having laid hold of it. Now, I don't know if that's before or after he saw the third heaven, but nevertheless, Paul was accomplished. Paul was someone who the Holy Spirit had radically changed, completely new heart. But he knew it was something that he had not seen. It was something that he had to believe and have hope in. The scripture says you don't hope for what you see. You hope eagerly, you wait eagerly for what you don't see by faith. But in the context here of what Paul is, the point that he's making is that, listen, your purpose is clear. Jesus went through what he went through and, and the Father provided, prepared a body so that we could be made blameless and beyond reproach, who we are spiritually. But he, notice the admonition, if you indeed continue in the faith, and he uses the word firmly, fir the words firmly established and steadfast. These are things that uh, can withstand assault, because they will be. Your faith will be. You know, every day we have a choice whether or not we are going to choose to have hope in the gospel or to believe what it is that we're seeing with our earthly vision, what it is that we see uh, for the here and now. That is very much a choice. You know, there's admonition after admonition about remembering and calling to, to mind things that God has done, times that he's been faithful. You know, I've, I've shared before, I write these things down because that's even a step further uh, to help you remember and keep those things uh, guarded within yourself. Because the way that it is when you come to Christ and you make a decision... I knew that when I came to Jesus, I knew what that was. I knew uh, because I had good counsel about it. I knew that it meant my life. I knew that it would cost me my life. And if you're clear about that, then you can have the mindset that in hope you will give everything because you have the hope 
you have the hope of what is to be. And we will never be complete unless that is guarded. Because you, when you make a decision, the devil is going to sift you out. And God will allow it. You know, when, when Jesus told Peter, he, you know, he told him, the devil's asked for you. And he didn't say, but I, I prayed that God wouldn't let it happen. He said that I prayed for you. And after, after you go through that, you pick yourself back up and you do what you're meant to do. You strengthen your brothers. You don't stay in that place. You say, take back up hope and guard it carefully. So we have to be aware that there's always the threat of being moved away from that hope. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 6. You know, one of the, the things that Paul mentioned uh, in Colossians, you can hold your place there in Hebrews, and I'll just read it to you, but I found it interesting that when he was talking about um, don't be moved away from the hope of the gospel, um, he went on to say that, you know, in light of that, I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake. And in my flesh, I do my share on behalf of his body and filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions. You know, those two things are very much linked. You know, it's not, it's not a mistake that that's the first thing, the first uh, admonition that he gives in light of that. That is, you know, he mentioned that he had been given a stewardship so that he could carry out the work that the Lord had given him to do. And... The diligence that comes with, you know, striving for that purpose that we have according to the working of the Holy Spirit. You're looking at the, the, the power of the Holy Spirit to change you, to change your life, and you work hand in hand with that. You reference that, and that then uh, instructs how disciplined and diligent you are. So here in Hebrews chapter 6, look at verse 10. God is not unjust so as to forget your work and the love which you have shown toward his name and having ministered and still ministering to the saints. It just means that God does not forget the work that you do. You may not ever be recognized for it. You know, that is, that's something that we say a lot. You, 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 are, you show the love of Christ whether or not it is appreciated, because it, ultimately it is for him. It is for his sake. Uh, you know, we, we preach the gospel, and if people receive it, we're, we rejoice. If they don't, we still rejoice, because the word went out, and God will do what he will do. Ultimately, it is for his sake. But God does not forget. And you may not see it now. You may not see the result. I know you know, we've talked many times about how at the end of Paul's life, he looked and felt like if you were looking at it naturally, it was a failure. Everyone left him. Um, but that was not the case. Notice verse 11, And we desire that each one of you sh show the same diligence so as to realize the full assurance of hope until the end. That you may not be sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. It's not a different path. We all have to, you know, anchor ourselves to that hope because there will always be difficult times. There will always be times when we need, you know, using the, the example that we have of all those men. You know, you go through Hebrews 11 and you see these people that the things that they went through, what they were willing to give up, what they were willing to sacrifice, 
because of that hope that they had. And, you know, we see here that we're supposed to do the same thing because it's through faith and patience we inherit the promise. You know, we know that the scripture says there in Isaiah that Jesus would see his offspring if he would be faithful to lay himself down. But it wouldn't happen until we were redeemed. It, it would, he wouldn't see it until he, you know, that's what Jesus said. If, if, it, if that grain goes into the earth and it dies, it will bring forth much fruit. But it's not going to happen until it dies. And that was very much a, an act of faith. Look at verse 13. For when God made the promise to Abraham, since he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself, saying, I will surely bless you and I will surely multiply you. And thus, having patiently waited, he obtained the promise. For men swear by one greater than themselves and with them an oath given as confirmation is the end of every dispute. You know, the context here is that you know who it is who has promised. Faithful is he who has called you. You don't have to wonder about what he's going to do as far as keeping his word. He always keeps his word. It will never be undone. Everything that God has promised is as sure as anything has ever been. In the same way, God desiring even more to show to the heirs of the promise the unchangeable, unchangeableness of his purpose, he interposed with an oath. And, you know, I'd heard the statement uh, that maybe a couple weeks ago, that there's nothing more that God wants than for you to believe him. We see that here where he says, listen, he desired even more to show those that will receive it how faithful he is and how unchangeable his purpose is. He gave the oath and the promise in which it is impossible for God to lie. We may have strong encouragement, we who have fled for refuge and laying hold of the hope set before us that strong encouragement it, it allows you to have courage in the face of difficulty you know we have likened it to you know holding the line you have soldiers that are linked together shield to shield you only need to break one that's how important it is for each one of us to Guard our hope so that we can have that strong encouragement and not be shaken when things seem to go wrong. To not allow ourselves to be moved away of the hope of the gospel. What has changed in, this, in, in the history of your life that has any effect on the hope of the gospel? Absolutely nothing. So we lay hold of that hope. Verse 19, this hope we have is an anchor of the soul, a hope both sure and steadfast and one which enters within the veil. You know, our place is with God and, and it is you know, very much so is not an easy thing. Jesus never said it would be easy. He said it was with difficulty that the righteous are saved. And this makes hope that much more important. Turn with me to Philippians chapter 1. I mean, we have to be aware that the arrows are going to come. Satan's not giving up. You come to Christ, he doesn't stop. You know, the scripture is very clear that it's, it is with violence that the kingdom is taken. He will fight to the end. So it takes the right mindset in order to keep your hope and guard it with courage and 
you know, to be willing to sacrifice. Philippians 1, look at verse 19. I rejoice, yes, I will rejoice, for I know that this shall turn out for my deliverance through your prayers, the provision of the Spirit of Jesus Christ according to my earnest expectation and hope. You know, the Apostle Paul was saying here that uh, even though maybe he was in a, a, a difficult situation, he would rejoice. And again, he would rejoice because he said, I, I know that God will deliver me. And it's, a, it's according to the earnest expectation and hope. Uh, again, it's going to take earnest expectation. And I will not be put to shame in anything, but that with all boldness Christ shall even now as always be exalted in my body, whether by life or death. Either way, you know, we, you, you must understand your, your life... It has no meaning if it's not given in service to the Lord. It is truly meaningless. Uh, there, there's no one that has ever done anything that has any type of, uh, of real good effect if it wasn't in service to God. Everything else has really just been a waste of time. And, you know, that's the attitude that Paul had. You know, he, he had hope, he had faith, and it wasn't in what he was going to see uh, just in this life. But he knew it allowed him to, to be convinced he wouldn't be put to shame. That believing and, you know, standing, it, it's kind of like uh, where we are, we are happy to be fools for Christ. It does not bother us because we know that God's word will be proven true. It may not be for here and now. Uh, we may look like fools for our entire lives. Uh, but we know that one day people will see Jesus as he is. And every knee will bow. There will be no question on that day. Let's look at Psalm 119 just briefly. Psalm 119, look at verse 114. You know, this is the backdrop always is there's, there's difficulty, there's struggle. Human beings are wired for struggle. God put it in us to have the will to fight. Verse 114 For you are my hiding place and my shield. I wait for your word. So you have. You have what's going on, what, you're, what you are looking at, and then you've got the choice. Do I accept that or do I, work, do, do I wait for, for God's word on the matter? Do I wait for what he has said? Do I have faith? Do I, have, am I, do I believe this enough to have hope in it? Because that's, that is the difference. That's what separates someone who achieves and doesn't achieve, who's approved and who isn't approved. Lots of people talked about how great Jesus was. When there was persecution is when you found out who was who, who really had hope in what he was saying. You know, Jesus, he addressed that and, you know, at different times. You know, once he said that you, you follow me because you ate the bread and you enjoyed that. But you don't understand the purpose for why I'm even here. You know, that God gave the children of Israel bread and they all died. They perished in the wilderness. They didn't even get to see the promise. I 
I will wait for your word. Depart from me, evildoers, that I may observe the commandments of my God. Sustain me according to your word that I may live. And do not let me be ashamed of my hope. Uphold me that I may be safe, that I may have regard for your statutes continually. For you have rejected all those who wander from your ways. For their deceitfulness is useless. Again, if it's not the truth of God, it is meaningless. It doesn't matter how good it makes you feel right now. It's pointless. You have removed all the wicked of the earth like dross. Therefore, I love your testimonies. And my flesh trembles for fear of you. And I am afraid of your judgments. You know, I noticed in reading that this morning, it's the fear of God that makes us fearless for everything else. That is how we're able to be courageous to be wholehearted in, in our hope and our faith in him. Because in reference to him, we don't have anything to fear. You know, if you truly believe that, uh, you know, like to be known by him and to have the fellowship of his suffering and the likeness of his resurrection, that is the hope of the gospel that someone who, with courage, will not be moved away from. Hallelujah.